Charter. Fish on right here. <laughs> Hold the board. Two, four. Got our faces. Yes, sir. Now I grabbed the line from the rod tip here. He can't even stick this one out to make it look bigger. Put it in my release. Oh boy. Oh boy. These eels will swim and just try to get to the bottom. See that? There's no weight on him. He's Three glass beads above your swivel as that eel fights to get to the bottom. Wow, John. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. Uh, this is another episode in the Striper Fishing Right Here, Right Now series where when you see this video pop up in your feed, it means do this now to catch stripers. Okay? These are based on the time of the year mostly, so... Right now, this video is good from October through winter into early spring a little bit. This is on the Chesapeake Bay for the biggest stripers you're ever going to catch. Uh, good numbers, big fish, over 40 pounds regularly, uh, plenty over 50. And we had one a little over 60, but I've been posting videos on how to exactly how I do this for about 16 or 17 years now, right when YouTube started. And I'm going to use some clips showing you the bait, the rigs, the line, the rods, the reels, the presentation, where to start, uh, how to move. Every single thing is in here, how to do it to catch the biggest stripers of your life. If you have any questions, please email me. I'll be glad to even share a ramp what to use. I just don't want to post it here in the title. But if you uh, email me, I'll be glad to share anything I can that might help you. And well, let's get right to it. I know you guys want to see it. So here we go. Big, big, big Chesapeake stripers. You can do this if you're good on the water. And I know you are. Love you. Mean it. This whole style of fishing is designed to cover water quickly. Find these big rogue bass that are close to the surface. We barely ever mark them on the fish finder. And when we do, they're usually smaller fish. So, you know, we don't actually have to run around and mark fish like we do normally. This was, we want to mark bait at least. These are big rogue fish. We rarely get doubles. Happens sometimes, but pretty rarely. And what we want to do is go with the tide. I don't care what your tide chart says. Get out here on the water, put it in neutral, and sit for two or three minutes. Don't worry about the waves, don't worry about the wind. Watch your chart and see which way you're, you're drifting. That's the way you wanna go with your boards. Put your trolling motor down. Our tide was taking us at about five tenths of a mile an hour. So I'm pulling us at about one, 1 1.2. And go with the tide. That's the most natural presentation. These fish are facing up the tide. They're not facing down, so they're facing up and they're going to watch bait come over them. I'm adjusting the trolling motor on the top It's very important. If you're fighting the tide, you're stemming the tide, you're not covering water, it totally defeats the purpose. Something like that can be the difference of a two fish day or a zero fish day. So I don't know if you can see our spread. Three boards on this side. We have two planers, planer floats, TOS planer floats that you can't see their way out there. And three of the uh, Zach Royce boards on that side. All right, I'm going to take a second to show you the rig we got here. We use the Acrid 400s for this, the, the new Valiants. These are the new Striper Stealth rods, brand new. These are prototype rods, so the real ones you get are going to look a little different. But these are wicked rods here. Soft tip, everyone knows I like a soft tip, and that's the first thing these, things, these rods have is a soft tip. So. We're using our ready rig TOS floats, TOS planer floats, okay? Team old school. That's right, team old school. TOS, baby. And that bead, put a bead here. And just snaps on the line. You can see it can slide here. We got about four feet a liter on here. This one's a little short because we had a break off, but four to five foot, even six foot of fluorocarbon liter, 40 pound. And we're going to go do our eel. And I just do the bottom lip up to the top with our circle hook, okay? And as soon as you hook them real quick, throw them right in the water real quick. Because they'll wrap up and, and you know tie and be PMS. So now we're gonna grab the float. The reel is in free spool here with the clicker on. That was awesome, Put the man. rod in the rod holder or between your legs. And now I'm just gonna let line out. Eric, how many pulls did you have on that one? 
About 15, 16. Quite a far out there. Yeah. Yeah. After, uh, before the float? Yeah, I, I usually only put about 10 oh, feet behind one. these, but the one he just caught twice had about 30 feet behind the float. So I'm going to say these are two foot. I'm going to do 15 of these. And once I got the line out, that's what you do. You grab the line from the rod tip, not the line down here, the line here. And I put a twist in it. And the twist is the trick because it pops out nice with a twist. So you saw I just did the one or two twists. Now you grab the plunger on the ready rig. Put this in the release and I always push it down make sure I got it and now with, with the twist and when the fish puts pressure on this he'll pull the twist out and it'll just slide right down to the bead when it hits the bead it stops and won't go down to your fish if you just clip it on it might come off but sometimes you're yanking and yanking and it just slides down so if you put a twist in you know the twist comes out slides down to your bead yeah again I put my twist put it down and now I'll just go ahead and get it out way away from the boat these planer floats are not designed to go way out to the side like a planer board is. I don't know if you can see them out there. They're designed to, to work in pairs and stay away from each other. So they'll go out away from each other. Like I said, they won't go to the side, but they're nice because when they get out there, they stay away from each other. And if I put a lot of line, they go far enough where I can put another float right down the middle. I can put flat lines. I can put down lines right in the middle. This gives us another option for more lines. All right, so we just put them in the rod holders and we, uh, we start with our strike drag where we're going to fight the fish. That's where we're going to fight the fish. Put it in the rod holder, back it off a touch. Enough pressure to set the circle hook, but not enough where it's so much pressure you can't get it out of the rod holder. Once you get them out of the rod holder, you can move it up and go to work. So we put three on each side. The one closer to the boat will let more line out. So the line is uh, a little further back from the board and a little deeper since it's so close to the boat. So he's going to let out the clicker on. He's going to let out. I don't know, what, what, what have we been doing? I've been pulling out about 20, about 20, 24 times. All right, let's do it. And the board that's furthest from the boat, I'll put it closer to the board. And the middle one, you know, gradually getting longer and longer lines as we get closer to the boat. That planer board further out there will actually attract fish. I've seen bass come up and smack the board out of anger, so it's pretty good to put it close. And that should be right there close to 26, 26 feet. All right, and these are the uh, Zach boards, Zach Royce boards, great planer boards. There's a lot of good planer boards out there. We've used several names, but I really like these. And the other lobe was new to me. I never used one with a lobe cut out in the front. And what I have found, especially in freshwater, they jump right over leaves, pine needles. Instead of getting hung up on your board, right. you give me yank, it goes right, right over. Instead of just dragging along. Yeah. And uh, I do a twist and release. I didn't show you this. This is a little. Yeah, show me that. I take it and do just a. Just clip the. I just do it like a. T I'll grab it and I'll just give it a twist. And then when I, I put the loop in here. And what happens is sometimes if you clip it to the line, when you if it sits out there for a long time, this line creates a channel in that rubber. Mm. And when you yank, the this release just slides down the channel. So sometimes it won't release. It just slides. In this situation, the fish hits and like this way, and it pulls out the twist. And when the twist comes out, there's no way it it's, forces it. Right. It just the twist comes out, and line comes out. So I like that. Yeah. I like that. And I do it with my boards. I do it with my floats. Anything, even the uh, instant downriggers. The important part is you got to clip the clip the lobe of the right. Don't ever put the clip on the twist, because if you put the clip on the twist, like spin that real quick, just twist it. If you put like see the twist is right here uh -huh. now pinch that right there like you're the release sometimes when the line comes this will go around the release because it's sticking out like that and it seems like it catches the release every darn darn time and then it's wrapped around the release and you can't trip it right right so don't ever grab the actual twist always grab the loop i only put like two twists and then i grab the loop okay. there you That's go it. perfect perfect i like that also another little tip Raise your motor as high as you can if you have fly-by-wire controls. If you have mechanical controls, bump your motor in gear. Even when, you know, it's off, of course. But just come up to your control and just whack it. And what that does, it just stops your prop from spinning. Right now, my prop is sitting there spinning, and it's spinning quick. And he's letting this line out here. Say we're drifting a little to the left or to the right. That eel goes under there. It gets anywhere near that spinning prop and it gets sucked right in. Wraps right up. 
So I, unfortunately I can't stop my prop because I have fly by wire. So I just raise my motor as high as I can. Guys with mechanical controls, just pop it in gear, reverse or forward, doesn't matter. Now it's a circle hook. So if this fish is screaming off drag, we're just gonna pop the rod out of the rod holder and go to work and fight that fish. But if he's not screaming drag and he's just kind of taking the line down, we're gonna come over. What's nice about these striper rods, see the way the gimbal grabs it. You can grab it and just crank as fast as you can until that rod bends down into the meat, into the backbone, and that fish has got his eyes thoroughly crossed. Then we take it out of the rod. Give him a toothache, bring him on board. <laughs> That's it. See what he looks like, take him for a boat ride, take a picture, let him go. Let me see if we see our spread here. This is the most forward rod. That side planer right there. And this rod here is the very next side planer. The rod back here that's standing straight up, right in the sun, is the furthest planer. It's out there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then we have these two rods that are standing straight up in the deck. Those rod tips are probably about six feet apart, but way out there, you can see the TOS planer floats. Let's see if I can point one out for you. There's one there. And the one there and you can see if you can see them they are probably I don't know, 30 30 feet apart or so even though the rod tips are only six feet apart here those planer floats do a really good job of staying away from each other all right then we're over here on the uh, port side and it's the same thing it's cookie cutter on the other side just the exact opposite so the furthest one out is the rod furthest to the back our second and then our closest. But the name of the game is cover water. Get our spread as big as we can, move as quick as we can while still presenting the bait the right way. So what you're gonna do is when you first come out here, I know you're gonna be hot to trot and wanna put some lines out. As soon as you get out here, what you're gonna do, put the boat in neutral, turn the motor off and just look at your icon. I know you're gonna to want to fish, but you gotta chill. Just sit here for two, three, four minutes and look which way the boat is drifting. Doesn't matter which way the waves are going, doesn't matter what the tide chart said, so you think you're gonna go, just wait and see what really happens. We came out here and we just sat, and I can see which way we were drifting. Earlier, the tide was going out, we were drifting north to south. Now the tide is coming in with the wind, which is excellent. So we knew we were heading this way. We knew our drift was coming north from south. Heading this way, we're going up the bay. And lucky for us, the wind is going the same way. So what that lets us do is go very fast, but it, because the current is headed this way, our presentation still looks good. So you don't want to get out there and go with the wind when you're going against the current. Uh, you may think you're going quick, but you're not moving probably, you're probably sitting still. You really gotta watch your speed on your GPS, find out where the current is, try to stay with the current all day long. Now, if you have wind against current and you're locked up, cross the current, go sideways, but don't just sit there locked up and don't try to go against the current. Just go sideways to it, cross it each way, cross it one way, we were crossing it east, east west and it was doing nothing for us, we reversed it and we caught two fish right away, had a couple of the pickups too. But we wouldn't know that unless we tried it. So now the tide is turned. The wind is going with the current, which means we can go very fast. And the name of the game with this system is cover water. All right, so you see we're doing 1.1 mile an hour, 1.2, 1.1, 1.3. 1 and the motor guy is only set on three. So we have the current and the wind with us. And now I can speed it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna probably see the boards better on this side. You can see at 1.3, there's not much current getting ripped across those boards. They look almost like they're sitting still. So that's what you judge, you know. If you're going too quick, you see that current ripping across the board, and you know your eel's getting ripped up. You want that eel to be able to swim to the bottom, hammer to the bottom, keep trying to get to the bottom, and jiggle those beads, make noise.
Mm. Nice and bronze, man. These are so pretty up here. Look at that. All right, I'm going to show you how we put our eels on. I go from the bottom lip up through the top. Some people go in the mouth at the top, but I like getting both lips. See, he's holding it with the rag just around the shoulders here. That's where you want to grab it. And we're going to go up through both lips. And as soon as he's hooked in the water as quick as you can, you hold it. He will turn backwards. He'll come up. He'll wrap around your hand. You see how he's starting to work already. He will completely tie a knot and just wreck, wreck your day. So we're going to go ahead and put the board out. Hold the board. Eel goes in the water. Three spool clicker on. Hold the board. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And I grab the line from the rod tip here. Do the old little twist. That's a meal slime. Put it in my release. Okay. That's it. Let it out. Yeah. These eels will swim and just try to get to the bottom. You don't need much weight. As long as you go less than two miles an hour, they will fight to get to the bottom the whole time. Three glass beads above your swivel as that eel fights to get to the bottom. The rocking of the boat pulls the, the boards up and down and it rattles those beads really nice. And this big wide open water like this it really helps those big fish hone in. You can't use plastic beads, they will not work. And use at least three glass beads. It makes a really nice noise. I don't like a lobster or a crab clicking, just any kind of forage, you know, makes that noise and helps them find these baits in these big wide open areas, you know. We lock up the reels in the rod holders just like this. We don't, you know, we don't let the fish run or anything. Circle hook, these are offset circle hooks. These are the uh, owner of Mutu, M-U-T-U. Love these hooks. You just slowly take the rod down, slowly take this striper stealth rod down load that hook in the corner and that's it pick up the rod and fight the fish no yanking no setting the hook just put them in the rod holders get the boat moving about 1.5 miles an hour for today sometimes we go really slow sometimes we crawl sometimes we, we move quick today they liked it quick all right my favorite hook for pulling eels owner of mudu light wire with the seven knot right there it is an offset circle hook I like offsets when we're moving I use inline circle hooks when the line is slack or on the bottom like when we're chunking. When we're moving, I use offsets. This is my favorite hook. And we're going to go ahead and put an eel on here, get that in the water. My second favorite, actually everything else, these are three hooks that are a tie for second place after the owner muted, okay? Eagle Claw, Trocar, Lancet, you can see it's a cutting point, I hope you can see that. There's a blade on that point, it's also offset. All of these hooks, straight shank. I don't use a snail ever. After that, also straight shank. Mustad Demon Circle. Straight shank. Needle point, not a cutting point. Great hook right there. For chunking, Dai Daiichi. Sorry about that. Daiichi. Circle hook right there. You can see it's a straight shank as well. They also have the super chunk. This is a regular, but a super chunk has a little tiny barb on the shank to keep your bait from sliding up and rehooking on the point. Great idea. Those are my favorite hooks right there, all circles as you notice. And uh, I don't use a snell, I use a Palomar knot. That's how I do it. Right now we're, let's see, we're two for two today. We're three for three yesterday. We haven't missed a single hook up yet. I'm not gonna jinx myself. But these, these hooks get the job done. They button up and stay buttoned up. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Just my favorite hooks. All right, finally, just watch my videos. You know I hate using weight. I try to avoid weight at any cost. But these eels, it works perfect with that presentation with no weight because they're always fighting to get down. So we speed up and slow the boat and we can control how high the eel is in that water column with our speed. So you see when you put this eel in the water, he'll fight to get down. I don't know if you can see that. See that there's no weight on him he's just fighting to get down fish today came off the board closest to the boat this camera makes that board look farther than it is it is probably 20 foot from the boat 50 pound fish biggest fish 50 pounds came on the board closest to the boat only 20 foot away and that tells me that that fish heard the noise of the boat and was attracted to the noise of the boat 
you know, these are migratory fish. They come from way up north right now. They can be up, you know, they, this fish could have been in Boston a little while ago, come back down, you know, Massachusetts. I mean, it could have come down from a, you know, a Gloucester, whatever. And it came all the way down here and they see all kinds of commercial fishing along the way, clam boats and bunker boats, and they hear the noise of the boat. And I guarantee that fish heard the noise of our boat. The board was close to the boat. The bait was close to the boat. He heard us making racket and that's what brought him in to, to, to take that eel. You know, a lot of times they would be quiet, be quiet. No one runs the motor. They hush, hush. And I was, I was like that too. And sometimes that's the way to go. But in the salt water like this, these migratory fish, I swear they like the noise. They like the noise, slamming hatches, you know. Guys pulling nets and throwing bycatch back and lobsters going back and menhaden and all kinds of whatever going back and they're used to feasting on it. So that nice loud noise of the boat, biggest fish came on the board right here. Tim's gonna show you our uh, method here. River dance, gotta drum them in. Yeah. <laughs> We're a commercial boat. There's our buddy again, he's been circling us all day. <laughs> We've seen every angle of his boat, right? <laughs> you're the man, Barda. You're the man. Love Trent Barda. Man, is that pretty or what? Legit. Congrats, brother. That's it. All right, John, we're going to give her a little more time. Oh, wait. How pretty is that? Oh, yeah, she's thrashing. Can't get the grip out of her mouth. Yep. Swim away, girl. <laughs> nice. How you doing? Good, how are you? You want any good? Just started, no, nothing yet. You got a line right there. You want me to take these in? Uh, you got no fish on board? No fish. Alright. Charter? No, no charter. Watch. He's good, he's good. Alright. Hey. Alright, well you all have a good one. Okay. Be careful, I'll Yes sir, I got rid of our uh... Thank you.